Hi everyone, welcome to the Highlights from Ukraine podcast, your daily audio summary of the latest news reported in the Ukrainian media. Sorry for the absence of yesterday's episode, it was due to some unexpected travel. My name is Artem and here is the news. For 476 days, Ukraine defends itself against the forces of the Russian invasion. Deputy Defense Minister Hanna Maler informed that it is extremely challenging for the Ukrainian forces to conduct the counteroffensive, as the Russian troops have densely mined the fields and are actively resisting. But despite this, the defense forces are steadily advancing, reports Interfax Ukraine. According to her, in the meantime, the Russians are conducting the offensive on a few fronts as well. In addition, the Russian forces are increasing the quantity of the attacks, artillery, mortar and aircraft ones, and thus trying to hold back Ukraine's offensive. The Russians are actively using anti-tank guided missiles and kamikaze drones. Mahler stressed that on Monday and Tuesday the Russians had not advanced on the Bakhmut front. Sky News informs that Western states estimate that since the beginning of the counteroffensive actions, the Ukrainian forces have been able to advance 7 kilometers deep into the Russian-occupied territories and liberate at least four villages, reports European Pravda. According to anonymous Western defense officials, the Russian side is generally well prepared for the counteroffensive actions by Ukraine, which is why so far the advance has been slow. The Russian forces have put up a good defense and have been falling back between tactical lines. This maneuver defense approach is proving challenging for the Ukrainians and also costly to attacking forces. Ukraine preserves loyal and well-equipped forces, but the conflict will most likely be characterized by exhausting combat, which will cause significant losses for months, the sources added. Earlier, NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg said that it is too early to draw conclusions about whether the Ukrainian counteroffensive will be a turning point in the war. But he added that Ukrainian troops are advancing and liberating more occupied territories. According to Stoltenberg, Ukraine's progress on the battlefield will strengthen Kyiv's negotiating position. President of Ukraine Volodymyr Zelensky informed in his evening video address that Kyiv continues communication with partners on Russian missile production. Yesterday morning, Russia conducted an attack on the southern city of Odessa with caliber missiles, killing three civilians and wounding at least 13. Dozens of components of these caliber missiles were supplied to Russia from other countries, said Zelensky. He stressed that the world has the tools to cut off such supply. We would really appreciate if you could rate us, ideally with five stars, in the apps where you are listening to this podcast, Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, Spotify or others. This really helps more people to find the highlights from Ukraine and learn the truth about Russia's invasion. The Netherlands announced plans to provide Ukraine with more air defense support, reports Militarny. Among other things, the Ministry of Defense of the Netherlands will purchase four Vera AG passive observation radar stations that cost 150 million euros. The radars can be used mainly for detection, locating, tracking and identifying aerial, ground and naval targets. Also at the meeting of the Ukrainian Defense Contact Group today, it will be announced that the Netherlands is allocating 40 million euros for the procurement of air defense equipment within the framework of multilateral partnership. The equipment will be delivered to Ukraine shortly. The Vera NG system consists of three receivers of the emission signals with a 360-degree range. The operating range of the system is 400 kilometers with a precision of up to 20 meters. <music> Belarusian dictator Alexander Lukashenko announced that his country has begun receiving Russian tactical nuclear weapons, reports Ukrainform. According to him, some units are three times more powerful than the atomic bombs the U.S. dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945. If confirmed, this will be Moscow's first move of such warheads outside of Russia since the collapse of the Soviet Union. PropertyMate, a U.S. startup founded by Ukrainians, raised 5.5 million U.S. dollars investments, reports Forbes Ukraine. Property Made helps and simplifies the search of purchase of newly built housing in the US. Now the company plans to enter new real estate markets. Thank you for listening to the highlights from Ukraine. We are a commercial initiative of just two people and we need your help to grow. Share information about the podcast, rate us in the app, subscribe to our Patreon. With your support, we are getting better. 
We call on you to demand from governments of your countries to impose the toughest sanctions possible on Russia and its citizens to stop their invasion of Ukraine.